another chittle deer hunt scheduled to start in a few days, it's time for another trip north on battered old Hilux. The veteran of a million kilometres of travel and countless hunting trips, this terrific old vehicle is starting to show her age. I promise to retire her to one of the properties very soon. Baggy. Give us a baggy. able to just jump into a dam and have a bogey. It's uh, over 50 degrees here today, Charters Towers is just sizzling. It's um, yeah, some of the hottest days on record for this time of the year and uh, we've just driven up from driven up from above Brisbane so it's been one heck of a run. The dogs are really feeling the heat so yeah, in the dam. I should hop in with you Choco. Quick Choco, quick. Choco, look. That looks so good. I had three very keen hunters on this trip, one being an old mate, Clem McKinnon, who was on his second chittle deer hunt with me. Dan and James, like Clem, were from New South Wales, so the weather conditions were daunting, even as daybreak arrived on day one. The guys were keen to hunt as a team, which in this country is a great asset. You can achieve so much more this way if all eyes and ears are tuned in together. Great places we come down on this creek down here. Great spot. Chockey was the first to detect something as his great big nose picked up scent coming down the almost dry creek bed ahead. With our wind good, we kept out of sight and made our approach. First time I was just about to let her go and he moved. First dingo down. <laughs> First dingo for the trip. I'll make the land owner very happy. I might take his hide if it's any good. Well done, fellas. First dingo on the deck. Stags. In the same gully, he would have been coming down there on there's a carcass, probably a dead deer in the gully or a dead wallaby. Uh, good shot. One shot, 200 metres. Dead puppy. Look, you'll be a fair size fella. Yeah. There is nothing that landowners like better than to see hunters shooting dingoes during a deer hunt. It shows the commitment most hunters have to the big picture, keeping landowners viable and on their land.
This middle-aged dingo bitch was one of the mangiest you would ever see, but a true killer in every sense. This was a very important breeding female to remove from this area. With the ground extremely dry from months of drought, it was slow, hard going to hunt the hills ahead of us. We were soon rewarded with a mob of stags who were preparing to bed down in the shade to escape the rising heat of the day. There were a few stags in this mob showing excellent potential, but possibly due to the extended dry conditions, they were still in hard velvet and maybe still slightly soft on their top points. We decided to leave them and hunt on. Yeah, looks like a dingo kill fellas. And a stag in velvet, chewed in velvet. They, they, they've yeah. eat his antlers, have they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can age them pretty easy by the first permanent molar, which is your fourth tooth, first, second, so two peg teeth, three, and then they're your premolars. Your first molar is that fourth tooth. And they're very much like red deer, they seem to age about the same. Um, rate. So on a red that would be like an eight or a, eight or a nine and a half year old stag. So I'd say what we'd have is a good stag, growing his velvet up here and probably a pack of dingoes. Maybe a wedge tail eagle but a pack of dingoes would have come in and, and um, yeah. So wedgie will take a full size stag. Wedgies will take them on as well. But usually what they do is they'll pick holes in the back, ride them, run them out in the heat. I've seen them run them out on one of those big flats, just wedges, right. usually half a dozen of them together. Mm -hmm. And I just take them out of the big flats in the heat and just run them and run them and run them until I've seen them actually staggering along with an eagle on their back, flapping on their back. Jeez. And I'll just usually pick out their kidneys and I'll go yeah. down stairs. In a lot of this northern country, there are signs of huge soil erosion. Blamed mainly on the cattle and the deer by many in government, the truth, however, is far harder to determine. When you can see the ancient bones of megafauna protruding from the banks that you walk through, you know the erosion has been going on for a long, long time. Jockey decided to break the monotony by bailing up a young bull. We quickly dispatched it so that we could keep heading on looking for stags. Countless years of drought has taken its toll on this country. It might be a natural thing, but something that impacts heavily on the trees. In many areas, we've lost up to 80% of our ground cover just through dry conditions. It's just nice to know that stock's coming through from the next year. The chittle deer have proven to be highly suited to this extreme environment. We were soon onto three great stags bedded in the basalt rock outcrops. Two were massive, but still weeks away from finishing their antler growth cycle. When the rain comes, all things spring to life in this country. The high temperatures of recent weeks were finally bringing some light showers and storms that allowed this recent hatch of butterflies to quickly take flight. soon back into action as a promising group of stags were spotted way out across a plain. The stalk was a hard one, but there was no other way but straight out across the rocks.
spin it down. The shot had been good and I saw the bullet strike behind the shoulder, but the stag still managed to run off in a circle and drop out of sight. I was sure he was down, but it was best to give it a few minutes before we closed in. Now Chalky took the chance for a bit of loving from everybody. He's one heck of a character, but in this hard dry country, many times now, his great nose and hunting ability has proven vital in finding stags that have often only run a short distance. This was one of those times and our stag was soon found after running only 100 metres. As we approached the fallen stag, we noticed another group of deer which had come up from the opposite side of the hill at the sound of the shot. There was a good stag in them, but just how good was he? days off rubbing. Beautiful stag, he's got that 10, 11 and a half to 12 inch brows, 30 and a half long, good inners, yeah, for your first chittle, excellent. Yep. Yeah, good stag, he looks probably in about that seven, yep. seven, eight year old, so this is a perfect time to take him and, uh, and yeah, full respect to a fantastic game animal. Thank you. May they last forever. Yeah, I think it will. And not to be treated as a pest and simply destroyed. 
So let's get it right. Hey, what do you reckon, Chucky? He said, I, I like them too. He said, I love them, especially cooked up and roasted. He's <laughs> a like good nick. In beautiful condition. And this is like it's drought times. Drought. Yeah, drought times, and he's in perfect conditions. Um, it just shows these are a magnificent animal here. Suited to the country. Yeah. Well, I thought I was aiming. That's six inches. I thought I was aiming. Hopefully it's yeah. going good, but here we go. Look how big that is. See that? See the fox well, get uh, the back. I don't know, this is good for our um, club, Central West ADA. We've travelled a couple of thousand kilometres to come up here on our James and I first chittle hunt. Clem's second. Seen, geez, we've seen some deer. With yeah. Drought conditions, tough, dry, but, but lots and lots of deer. Still plenty of deer about. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. It's good to see. Um, they were walked in the heat and the rain, and then this fella comes out of nowhere, really, doesn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, it all the looking around, and then all of a sudden it's done. There it is, it's it's done. over. So you deer stalk him, shoot him. That's right. The next minute he's on the ground, and you think, wow. And then, so, so that's yeah. my first chittle. So that's beautiful. And I was thinking when I was sitting here before, like talking 28, 30. Two inches. Yeah. Like at this moment, I couldn't give a stuff. Whether it's 27, <laughs> 30, or 33. I don't think it matters at this moment. Yeah. Poor old thing. Brilliant. Uh, now his mate over there was a, was a pretty head too, but yeah, we might just be able to do a little bit better. Yep. Yeah. It's a funny feeling, like um, elation and clean shot. But yeah, it's a race and a bit, of, a, a bit of relief. The, when Relief. You get him on the ground too. Yeah, but remorse as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's a bit sad. Like it's a lovely, lovely yeah. uh, bloody yeah, animal, isn't it? The best looking, yeah. best, best looking deer I've seen. And when I was sitting here, you guys stalked that other one. I'm just sitting here looking at this country, and I still can't get over the fact that we're hunting deer in this. Because us from New South Wales, more green, rolling pasture land and bracken fern gullies and rough. This is goat country. Yeah, yeah goats Western do country, well, yeah. and it just <laughs> just seems so unusual to be seeing deer out in this country for us. So it's good to be a new part of the country, a bit of the country I haven't seen before. Seen brogues, kites, a whole oh, bunch of stuff. there a while ago. Yeah. Just seen a new part of the country and getting out and seeing Australia. It is good. Good drive up. Everything. Yep. Clark's looking after us well, feeding us yeah, good. Good guide. <laughs> Knows his stuff. Lots yeah. of laughs. Knows his damn antlers right to the last centimetre. Yep. Now you're stretching the truth, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. We're, we're damn not stretching the truth. It's good to be hunting with people that show respect for a, a brilliant animal. You know, we're a game animal. Yep. Um, you know, the pros and cons there of well, it should be here and not. Like, let's get over that and look at it. They're, they are here, yeah, and uh, they're a great part. Managed properly. What a magnificent animal! Yeah, full respect, and you know, to take one with respect is one of the greatest things you can do. You know? Yeah. You well, see what dingoes can do to them. You see how yeah. the dingo, dingoes mm -hmm. treat them. They just pull them down and, and just chew on the bits. And yeah. yeah. This fella got a very. And then don't even use all of them. No. Funny there because you sat there and then I had to sit down. I was sitting up like this and then started getting pinned the needle, so I thought I'd better rest my legs. I said, We could be here for an hour. Yeah, that's what I'm Waiting for him to, and then they that's did what get a James bit fidgety. And I would say. Started looking around a little bit and they're moving the heads and then they settled, and then all of a sudden he was up. And then had to get in position, and <laughs> Clark just wanted a couple of seconds to call him. Banging, you know, tooting the horn sort of thing to get him to stand or something. Well, I said that. I said, <laughs> Clark said, Yeah, no, they'll lie there. And they won't sort of stand up like a fallow and look around and get ready. They'll um, just lie there and lie there and lie there. And, it, and when they get up, if you, they'll be gone. So we said we had to wait for him to get up on his own. Just mill around. Yep. Dogs worked hard for the last couple of days. Yeah, we haven't listened to him a couple of times, and he was right both times. Oh, uh, he just, this is what he's born to do, that chockey. He just loves hunting deer, yeah. especially the chittle. Yeah. Yeah. He's great on the reds. Yep. Uh, yeah, fantastic, even the fallow. He's been great, magnificent on pigs, but he just loves his chill.
I think he can tell the difference between a big one and a small one. With a beautiful red sky giving us hope of further rain to follow, our next morning dawned as yet another hot, steamy start to the day. We were soon on a good sign with a well-used preaching tree and scrape. This is our world. This is our wild country. 